This week on Inside the Headset, we are featuring our 2022 Regional Power of Influence Award winners in a roundtable discussion. The coaches discuss their journey, some of the mentors who have had an impact upon them, and some pillars of their football program. The 2022 AFCA and AFCF Regional Power of Influence Award winners are Jim Kelleher from Abington High School, Massachusetts. Rodney Salisbury Sr. from Whitehaven High School in Tennessee. Dwight Lundeen from Becker High School in Minnesota. John King from Longview High School in Texas. And Todd Sloat from Fall River High School in California. Now, let's get inside the headset. Welcome, gentlemen. It's really, I'm very humbled sitting here with you. I really am. I, uh, I have so much admiration uh, for high school coaches, and especially this group. I, I obviously read your bios. <laughs> uh, the Power of Influence Award, I think, is uh, one that Coach Taft started a little over a decade ago. Uh, we've maintained that, and it's one of our highest awards that we, that we offer. And we've actually kind of built it in to where it's the exact same as our collegiate awards now. And, and I think that's great for our high school community. Uh, but I want to, again, congratulate you guys on just what was uh, on your careers and, and kind of the influence that you had on life. Let's just kind of start off with that. Obviously, each one of you have done some different things besides just winning to impact your team, your high school players. Um, I mentioned before we went on air just the impact of my high school coach on me and uh, what he challenged me to do and how it really made me, quite honestly, into who I am. And so, Jim, let's start with you. Right. Uh, and we'll just go right down the table. Let's, let's talk about you know, your program, the impacts that you think <coughs> are just really significant. Are there, are there certain things that you try to do with your players or is it just the, you know, the culture of, the, of the, uh, the high school team itself? Well, uh, I'm from uh, upper, upper corner of the United States. I'm from Abington, Massachusetts, which is. I, see, about, I thought you were from Oklahoma. No, nah, no, no, no. Oh, maybe it's my. It's accent. your accent. Yeah, yeah there you go. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> All right, and uh, you know, I I grew up in Abington, Mass, which is south of Boston. Uh, I had ten kids in the family. I was the sixth one out of out of ten kids, and uh, truthfully to tell you, when I was eight, old enough to go to college, I was really afraid to ask my dad about going to college because I was afraid that it was going to take away from something of my brothers and sisters who were under me because it was going to be costing some money. All right? But, uh, you know, he said, get going, and, you know, and I, I, I did that, and uh, I played college football at University of Massachusetts, and I had a great time there. Uh, and I had a really good job getting out of college. It was going to be, uh, you know, a job where I could grow and do pretty good, and all of a sudden, after about a year and a half, you know, they said, do you want to coach at Abington High School? And certainly where I was working and what, when I was going to be going to teaching, there was going to be a big drop. <laughs> in what I was doing. And, um, and that didn't sway me one gosh darn bit. I, I said, yeah, you bet. You know, and uh, I started teaching. I was a math teacher and uh, I coached the other sports. And uh, first three years I was an assistant. In the third year, I was a able to become the head football coach. And uh, I was a I'm still the head football coach there. All right. and How many years? Uh, 52 years. Ooh. I already knew that. I, was, I, just, I wanted him to say that. <laughs> 52 years. 52 years at Abington High School. It's been great. It, it really has been. And we all know here that uh, I, I sit here a lot because of my mom and dad, okay, and I sit here a lot because of my coaches, all right. Uh, I, uh, I have a great staff. I, all of them have been with me for now about, all of them about over 20 years, all right. Uh, so that's, that, it's great, my, particularly my freshman coaches, I adore them so much with what they do and how they prepare those guys for us and then my, my coaches at my level, all right. Uh, there, they do they do a good good job of training them during, you know, during the practice week and getting them ready for the game along with me. And uh, you know, it's it's a it's wonderful. I I just really enjoy tremendously coaching football and with these with this group of kids and, and with my coaches. Uh, what else? Uh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into Rodney here. Yeah, good. Rodney, can tell us about your story a little bit, uh, the impacts that you think that are kind of going on in your program right now. 
Uh, well, again, I was just standing here, and they, uh, we, as we were talking earlier, they, they've been coaching 54 years, 52 years. <laughs> uh, I'll, be, I'll turn 50 this year. So it's like, hey, uh, standing on the shoulders of giants is, is one of the things that I like to say. Is, so you're just saying boomer to them, huh? <laughs> yes, oh, you're boomer. saying that. Yeah. Um, uh, but trying to follow in the footsteps of those that come before you, the, the groundwork that's been laid uh, in our program, Stan Collins, who is my head coach, uh, who I look up to, who helped raise us, uh, is just – build on those pillars of using football as a means to an end. Uh, football is a great equalizer and it can open a lot of doors uh, for you. So one of the pillars of our <coughs> program is combining athletics with education can help open doors for you to further education and just make you upwardly mobile uh, in your life. So we've been just doing that on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, again, I guess one of the epitomes of that is uh, sitting here with my son was here uh, in the room with us and one of my former players coming to pick him up uh, who works in, in the college level and say, hey coach, I'm gonna take him around so he can meet people and network. Uh, just seeing the full circle of how this game can change lives is, is one of the pillars of our program and using it as a platform uh, to again, help get exposure for young people uh, that in urban environments that may not get the exposure otherwise. Uh, football can, again, can open so many doors for you. And this game is great, as you spoke before, uh, the influence of your coaches, it just piggybacks along with uh, again, I'm just blessed to have a great mom and dad uh, and just piggybacking off of that with your coach and you have that full circle. You can really help kids change their trajectory in their life through the game of football. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I certainly don't want to dominate the conversation, but I, I do want to, uh, you brought up something that I think is really interesting is, and I heard Bill Curry say at one point in time, and you were talking about equalizers, right? And, you know, in our game, when we get in the huddle, if we get in the huddle anymore, but when we do get in the huddle, nobody cares about who your dad is, how mm -hmm. much money you make, what your color is, what your religion is, and what a great role model for all of society, you yes. know, and it is the equalizer because it puts everybody together and it's about what are you going to do right now and what are we going to do together as a team. Yes. And so I appreciate you saying that. Dwight, let's talk about your career here real quickly and uh, the things is, is, as <laughs> we just heard, 52 years. Uh, and uh, let, let's talk about that and kind of some of the same things that, that Roddy went into. Yeah, I, I was a son of a, a pastor missionary. So we, we lived in a number of countries and went to a lot of different schools. And athletics was always a big part of my life. And the coach, wherever I went, that was my connect group. And I knew very early in my college career that I wanted to be a, a coach teacher. And so, uh, I fell in love with this young lady and I was close to the college and I went to this school, it was very small, and if I, if I could be there, she would marry me. And we live there now for <laughs> 53 years and have coached football and uh, it's, it's something that I really enjoy and I have uh, uh, great uh, memories of all of the things that have happened to me in, the, in using football, but I think football is a great classroom and a great vehicle impact uh, young men and uh, in our culture uh, three to five is our happy hour that as coaches we're going to forget about everything that's going on in our life that'll be there at five and uh, kids you come there and from three to five we're going to enjoy each other and we're going to enjoy this great game of football and uh, I'm on my third generation of kids now. Yeah. I had your grandpa, I had your dad, <laughs> now I've got you, you're not gonna get away with anything. But they keep feeding those kids into our program. Everybody in Becker wants to play football. And that's the culture that uh, I wanna keep going. Uh, been there, I'm 76 years old. I could retire, go play golf and play pickleball, but I still think I'm doing what I really love to do and I'm impacting people in a positive way. So. I'm going to die with my boots on, probably. Good for you. Yeah. I think it's great that you're athletic enough to play pickleball right now. Ah, I, I, I love that game. That's a wonderful that? game. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, you, you mentioned the three generations. I think it's real credit to you. And you know, I, I, I spent 34 years as a head coach. And so I went in, and again, I coached all over the country, right? 17 different yeah. locations, head coach, assistant coach, whatever. I was always amazed at how seemed like the programs that won, the, the players were out. And then you'd walk down some other hallways where they weren't having as much success. And but the reason why they weren't having success was I was walking down the hallways going, how come you're not playing? And how come you're not playing? And how come you're not playing? 
And so I congratulate you on that because you're right, it's so much of that experience is about the players having a good experience, their parents having a good experience in your situation. Yeah. It happened to me, but the grandfather's having a good experience. You know, <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, John, same question. Let's talk about kind of uh, the impacts that you have on your program and just a little bit of your history. Well, I grew up in Louisiana and uh, went to school there and went to school at Northwestern State. I'm sure you're familiar with that from your days at <laughs> North, Northeast. That's correct. And uh, I defected over to Texas in 2000 because I wanted to experience Texas high school football. Yeah. That's all I've ever wanted to be was a high school football coach uh, because of my high school football coaches. And I've been lucky enough to be at Longview now 23 years. I've served as a head coach 19 years, the only head job I've ever had, and it's the only head job I want. It's my kind of community. Uh, I never will forget in pregame talking to a coach at another school. And just I was kind of upset or down with all the problems that we'd been dealing with. And he was at an affluent school, affluent area, and he said, you know what? You mean more to your kids than I mean to mine. And it, it struck home. And I've just kind of welcomed those challenges now. I mean, we're at a school with about 70% socioeconomically disadvantaged kids. My kind of people to coach, my kind of kids I want to be around. I mean something. Same thing that my coach meant to me in high school. Uh, I have nine former players coaching on my staff from middle school up. Yeah, that's awesome. And I brag about that more than I do the state championship. I've got guys I coached that I influenced along with my staff and, and, and everybody else, and, and they want to become a coach. So it tells me that uh, we're doing something right, but I'm now getting the second generation yeah. kids that I coach. And I always can compare them to their daddy, their uncle, or whoever. And uh, uh, I don't have to call home yeah. with those kind of no. people, you know, because they know they're not going to they're not going to get what they want with me <laughs> or their or their dad. So right. it's great to be able to coach those kind of kids. Uh, and, and Longview's a, a community town, yeah. and um, I love that community. I know that what football means to it every year in the fall, from when practice starts in August to when we play our last game. I mean, we're the lifeblood of that town, and it means something. And uh, uh, we're in East Texas where, you know, we don't get a lot of uh, move-ins, move-outs. You're kind of hung with Coach King in the, in the, in the Lobo way. So <laughs> our, uh, our kids know that. And, uh, you know, it's, like I said, it's, it's a great place to be. Uh, the impact we make as a coaching staff with our kids and our community is priceless. And uh, just I take a lot of honor and pride in, in being the head coach at Longview High School. Yeah, I know they do, you too, obviously, you have come through your school yeah. a few times. And uh, as you suggested, the, uh, the pride of that town, that is truly a Friday Night Lights town. It is. It is completely that. And, and so, and you got a great mascot, Lobo. Always loved that one too. <laughs> yeah. right. okay. Not many of those. Not very many of those. That's exactly right. Let's, let's talk, let's kind of move on here. I know that uh, I mentioned before we came on about just the influence of my high school coach. He just recently passed and he got into our Hall of Fame. and. A lot of us had a chance to uh, kind of say some remembrances about him. But uh, the impact of that gentleman on my life was just huge. I was single mom, living in Indian housing, you know, uh, food stamps, the whole bit. And I needed a father figure. And he was there kind of for me during that time frame. And uh, he meant the world to me. He was like, you know, like a second father along those lines. And But I, I know everyone's been influenced. And, uh, and so I'd like to... I think we all have to always pay homage to those people that made us. Uh, and so let's just start, Jim. Significant influences in your life? <laughs> oh, uh, without a doubt, Walter Pastor, Walter Stuzak. Uh, I first got in touch with him in high school when he was a teacher there, right? And then the, he, he was the head football coach, and he was a tough one, without a doubt, uh, right? And uh, then I came back after, after playing uh, it's college football and he came back to teach there and he was pretty happy about that you know and I, I was on his staff for, for one year and, he, and then he left and I then two three years later I took over all right uh, Walter Pastor is without a doubt you know I've got to know him just like I got to I would get to know my neighbor because that's how close we are you know uh, I, I know his son you know I, I coached his son I, I, I taught with his daughter all right, and we, we have gotten to know each other just like we, uh, you know, like it was uncle and uncle and uh, nephew. Uh, he is just a great person. He's 102 years old. Oh, wow. And his brother is 100. 
Uh, I, uh, when you get them together, they're unbelievable. Uh, I, uh, and I just adore him, and I give him a lot of credit to the makeup of myself, besides my mom and my dad, uh, a lot with him. Well, the pastors, uh, I, I, I adore him. That, that's awesome. I, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of mentioned that my high school coach kind of instilled in me some of those virtuous words of courage and commitment and sacrifice and all those things that kind of carry you through life. And then I look at kind of my collegiate experience with Johnny Majors, who was really well organized, and John Cooper, who was just one of the brightest guys that I'd ever been around in terms of being able to call both sides. And I, you try to emulate these people. And yeah. I think that's kind of an important part of this is not just the influence they had, but just the fact that you want to try to find ways to be like them. Uh, yeah. yeah, because, you know, as I went through college and I, I got, went four years of college and uh, I was on that football team and I got to play three plays my four years that I was there, okay, and I was about ready to, to leave, all right, and, uh, you know, I had a couple of conversations with him and he said, no, 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 hang it in there, you know, you, you've, got, you've got the grit, you can make it, you know, and I had one year to go and uh, I had an extra year, I had to be there anyways. All right, and I left, and as I said, I made all New England, all East, all Yankee Conference, and all that kind of stuff. All right, and I thanked him a lot for that to make sure that you know I didn't uh, pass that opportunity up. Sure, sure. Ronnie, same same question. Uh, influences your life? I give a twofold answer. First and foremost, I'll start with my dad. Um, my dad is a pastor, so he served his father, pastor, spiritual leader, uh, and just uh, being given an example of what it you know, what it is to be a father, what it is to be a husband. Uh, leading the family, being a provider, protector uh, for your family. Uh, so having that model at home, it meant so much. And, and as a coach now, seeing how many kids that don't have that, uh, you want to make yourself or emulate that for them to show them what it is, what it is to play in those roles. Uh, so one, I want to get hats off my father, Pastor uh, Clinton Salisbury. Uh, and then secondly, my high school football coach, uh, Stan Collins, uh, who I have a pleasure. He's still around now. Uh, still get a chance to see him, get a chance to bounce things off of him. And he just started with the whole motto of, again, using football as a means to an end uh, and not letting the game use you because uh, the game is tough. The game we play is a hard. This is a tough game. It can teach you so many things, uh, but you can use it as a vehicle for change. And that's what we want to focus on and uh, just taking what he started and just continue to develop it, continue to grow it uh, and being a staple of the community. Uh, our community is, is a great community uh, in our, within our city, and we say it's a home with a city within the city. Uh, Whitehaven High School is that whole community, so we try to help bring it together. Uh, so, again, so Stan Collins, I mean, just the motto and the ethos that he started in the program, and we've, we say that we've just took that mantle and we just continue to run with it. Yeah, yeah, and you guys have done a wonderful job there. I've gone through that school several times and just, uh, 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 you can feel it even in, as, you, as you go through the high school, just uh, that kind of family, that kind of community. Yes. Uh, and I, I think that's really, uh, it's awesome, it's great. Uh, but, it, and unfortunately, especially in a lot of our urban schools, it's not necessarily always that case. And, uh, and it's so important, I think, for the, for, for the development, as you mentioned. Yeah, and that's the thing that, uh, is just like Coach said, is that having uh, almost my entire staff are alums of the school uh, that either play with me, uh, they play with me or play for me. Uh, so that having that development of just bringing them up and raising them up and uh, being able to develop, I have coaches now at some of the rival schools and the schools in the, in the neighborhood uh, that have played for me. So it's like I'm playing against, uh, playing against myself on a lot of weekends, uh, seeing those guys and seeing a lot of those guys here. So our, our goal is to develop, to develop people. And if you continue to develop people, you start seeing that fruit. And the greatest fruit you could ever see is see your young men Absolutely. grow up to be fathers, grow up to be coaches, grow up to be whatever walk of life. And them wanting to be what you do, uh, it means so much uh, to see them want to walk in your shoes. Absolutely. Great. Well said. Dwight, same question. Yeah, kind of the same thing. Uh, I had a, a lot of great coaches, as I mentioned. I went to a number of different schools. Uh, but I, I really like to hang around football coaches. Those are good people. And uh, this conference here, just been here a few hours, sat down with the table and met a great man and, and just shared uh, with him. And uh, Minnesota has a number of clinics and we go and we hang around with good people and that it helps me and keep getting better. And uh, I, I think that tells a lot about people, who you hang around with. And uh, I really enjoy football coaches. I think we're there for the right reason. 
and it's a lot of work and not much money and uh, uh, we, we kind of what's our purpose and what's our goal and when your purpose is this to impact people it's easy yes. win or lose on Friday night that scoreboard doesn't define you it's who you are and that's what we need to teach the kids and I, I really enjoy that part of it and, and what, I appreciate what you guys do in organizing a, a, a clinic like this this is amazing I, I really really enjoy it so far oh and I appreciate that yeah the brotherhood of coaches yeah. is, is is truly incredible. And I mentioned my high school coach, L.D. Baines, earlier. One of the things that he used to say to us all the time, and it was obviously a warning, but to your point is show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Mm. You hang around yeah. with good people yeah. that are going to inspire you and motivate you, yeah. you'll be inspired and motivated to do great things. You hang around the wrong people, and then they're going to get you in trouble. And so to your point about just uh, the camaraderie, I think, of coaches, I was – I had a media individual one time that used to always, it was his first year in doing this, he would cover our games and he'd always go out uh, before the game whenever I was talking with the other head coach. And he goes, I'm just amazed at how close you are as coaches, the, the coaching community. And it's not necessarily that I always knew them well, it's that I knew what they were about, I knew what they were going through. And I thought, you know, that, that really resonated with me at the time, and I, I appreciate yeah, your comments. In 50 years now, I'm finding I coach the coach more. Yeah. You know, I have a doctor in town that's one of my assistants. He called me the other day and says, Coach, I hired this doctor, and it's really not working out. What would you think I should do? And I said, hey, I've had that a few times, Coach. I don't know if it's your fault or my fault, but this isn't working out. Send them down the road. You know, so I said, thanks, coach. You know, so they, they, they look to you now because yeah, you've been doing it 50 some years and you've probably experienced something like that. Coach, what do you think? Absolutely. And mm -hmm. more so than even just the players, the, the coaching the coach. Yeah. John, same question. Uh, this is an emotional question or an answer for me. Uh, I tear up every time I think about my high school coach, but. Uh, Mom and daddy were important influences in my life. Uh, both of them were educators. Uh, always gave me what I needed, not necessarily what I wanted, and uh, raised me the right way. The biggest influence on me outside of those two uh, in high school was uh, growing up in Spring Hill, Louisiana, was Travis Fair, my high school coach, Hall of Famer. Sorry, coach. <laughs> but, uh, I don't do a good job talking about it. No, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right, Coach. You're doing the best yep. that you can do. <laughs> you just like to say you're honoring him more with what you're not saying than what you are trying to say. No doubt. But he put a lot of pride in that community. And uh, the influence he had on me made me want to coach and uh, he still has that influence today. I still do a lot of the same things he did with us 35 years ago, yeah. but uh, <clears throat> was proud to play for him. Won a state championship, the only one he ever won. I played uh, for him uh, and we won it. And uh, I want to be like him. And, uh, then I went to Northwestern State a guy named Don Shiles was my offensive line oh, yeah. coach. You know Don I know Shiles. Don well. I don't cry talking about him. He was Don a tough hombre. Don he coached was <laughs> tough. Yeah. And I coached my kids at Longview the same way he coached me. I didn't like him when I played for him. I loved him after I finished because he coached us the right way. And then when I got into coaching, I got hooked up with Pat Collins. You know Coach Collins know very Pat well. Will. Great influence on me as a coach in my professional career. Taught me how to deal with people. How football wasn't the only game in town because you had to think about the cheerleaders, the band, the dance line, the parents, the other sports, the influence that you could have on them, you know, and, and uh, winning takes care of everything, you know, I mean, we all know that, but it's how you treat people in the long run, you know, sometimes winning can wear out, and how are they going to view you after the wins and losses, so I would say, you know, Coach Farrah and then and, and Don Shells and Pat Collins, if, if I had not cross paths with those guys, I wouldn't be sitting right here today. It might not be in Longview, Texas as a head coach, uh, but very fortunate to, uh, to have been influenced by those men. 
I appreciate it. You know, well, I can't sorry tell about you. that crowd. No, yeah, right. no, no, Edit that out. Apologize at all. I love, <laughs> I love that the um, our game is passion. Uh, what we do is passion, right? And if you're not passionate about the game and your players, it's probably the wrong profession, right? That's it kind is. of what this is all about. And I, I can't tell you how many times, and I, I really appreciate this too, because this is the power of influence award. Mm -hmm. And how many times you guys use the word influence during this talk? That, that just kind of, uh, that, that certainly resonated with me because it continues to echo kind of what the coaching community is about. Yep. It's once again, oh, let me ahead. say this. One of the coolest things for me coaching my son was when my former coaches wanted to come watch him play and I was able to take my son and introduce him to the guys that coached me. Yeah. And the influence they made, and you know, some of them are gone now, and some of them are still alive, keeping up with him, and that was the greatest. I took more pride in introducing my son to my coach yeah. than I have anything else. So, anyway, it's just a great profession. It is a great profession, guys. I very much appreciate the, this segment with you. Like I said, I'm humbled to be sitting here with you, and uh, I wish you the best here during this convention. As you mentioned, this is an opportunity to connect and and uh, become inspired. It always did me. And so, again, thank you for all that you do for our student athletes uh, and all that you do for your communities. I appreciate y'all. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Inside the Headset. If you heard anything on this episode that you would like to learn more information about, head over to afcapodcast.com where you can find every episode and all of the corresponding show notes. While you're there, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, please let us know by sending an email to podcast at afca.com. Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Inside the Headset and tag it when you share each episode. You can stay up to date with all things AFCA by following the at We Are AFCA Twitter account. Every episode of Inside the Headset can also be found on your favorite audio streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you are not currently a member of the AFCA, be sure to find us online at AFCA.com and apply to join over 10,000 NFL, college, and high school coaches from around the country who are striving to be the best they can be. With an AFCA membership, you gain invaluable access to the annual AFCA convention, the bi-monthly magazine, and the new and improved digital library, which contains thousands of videos and articles contributed by hundreds of current and former football coaches. You can also visit AFCAinsider.com to sign up for our free weekly email newsletter on the right-hand side of the screen. It comes out every Tuesday at lunch and is filled with great articles and stories written by many of the same coaches you hear on the podcast. It's geared to help you become a better coach tomorrow than you are today. Be sure to connect with me on Twitter at Coach Mario Price. And remember, the AFCA is not just an annual convention. It is an association that continually promotes education, guidance, and networking. But it is also so much more than that. The AFCA is about celebrating the past and educating the future. It is about developing great coaches who will produce great teams and even better people. So invest in your skill set and impact today by engaging with the AFCA.